seemed to call me back in Tucky way And I would leave right when I tried The guiding stars fall straight out of the sky Mom always told me twice Love a man with all your might When it's time to up and go away to you The orange blossom below The orange blossom Many brings us rage into our home. Now was young and pretty once. Now the years lie etched across my face. Now was free and hope once. Till the day I parted all my faith. Mom always told me twice, love a man with all your might. When it's time to up and go away to you. The orange blossom blow. A man with all your might when it's time to up and go away to you. The orange blossom blow. The orange blossom blow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, I'm going to um, play you a song that's uh, a little bit unusual for me. Um, so most of my songs tend to be about someone other than myself. So I might write a, write a song inspired by history or folklore, or maybe like a short story or a poem that I'm reading at the time. And my songs seldom tend to be personal. But uh, this song is an exception. And I wanted to write it about something that I think unites us all as humans. And that's going through the process of losing someone that you love. It's something that's gonna happen to each of us in our lives someday. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic partner, but uh, in this case it was. And it could be uh, just a dear friend, or it doesn't even have to be human, it could be a pet. Um, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I wanted to write about what that felt like. And I'm the type of person that, when I find someone that I love, I really try to hold on to them. I try to hold on to the people that I love. And, uh, so it was always very disconcerting for me that when you are falling in love with someone, they might be the very closest thing to your heart, and you share everything with them, and then maybe the day comes when you fall out of love, and that person who was once so close to you becomes little more than a stranger. And so I wanted to write a song about what that feels like. And I wove an imagery from uh, the Northern Lights because I actually spent the first seven years of my life in Alaska. And then my family relocated to New Hampshire where I spent the rest of my childhood. 
So the Northern Lights are very near and dear to my heart, and I thought that they were a really lovely allegory for losing love because they're fleeting, but they're so beautiful. So this is Northern Lights. you once think I slept through your goodbye melancholy only lasts so long you can't find the strength to cry we held the world up for a while Painted life in white and gold. It's hard to remember when the fall goes in. The distance takes its toll. Build me a ladder to the northern lights so I can watch them from the sky. Thank 
you very much. So uh, are you ready for a happy song? <laughs> I think I am too. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I wrote this, uh, this next song in celebration of uh, my favorite season here in New England, which is the summer. I'm sure I'm not alone with that. And uh, I uh, have toured, well, before COVID, I toured um, a lot in Europe and um, in the UK, and I would have to kind of explain to people like what the maple syrup harvest was and, you know, harvesting the sap and everything like that. And of course, as New Englanders, I don't need to explain any of that to you. You understand it all. But um, one thing that I always really loved as kind of like a first sign of spring was seeing those buckets, those, those metal buckets hanging from the maple trees. And I don't know if they have a technical name. I always just called them like the sugar in buckets or the sugar buckets. I'm sure there's like a name for them. But uh, it's always really heartening to start to see those pop up. And you know that spring is on, it. spring is on its way and then summer is on its way. So uh, yeah, this is just a, a light, happy song about that time of year here in New England, and hopefully it'll get you feeling a little bit warm today. <laughs> so this is called June Day. trouble but I can't turn back the promise of a tire swings got me crossing all the tracks let the day and all its glory pass without care underneath an apple tree the air is too sweet to share and I'll lay down underneath the summer sun Think it's honey till the light leaves and evening comes. Sit here beside me, darling, on this hot June day. I tumble in the summer grasses, sweeter than the autumn hay. Sit here beside me, darling, on this hot June day. 
you. So uh, I'm going to play you another one that's um, really close to my heart. Uh, so this, uh, this next song is off of my newest album, and I'll tell you more about my albums in a little bit. Um, and it's actually inspired by my my sweetheart at the time, who is now my husband. Um, so my husband is from Italy. And so in order for us to be together, we had to jump through a lot of legal hoops. So had to file a lot of paperwork, hire a lawyer. And it took about two years for his green card to come through. And now he's been here in America for almost four years. So I think he's really settled into the American way of life. But of course, the lovely thing about uh, being in love is that you're inspired all the time. And uh, I think that's doubly true when the person that you love is far away from you. So the first part of our relationship was over Skype and phone calls and flying to visit each other. And I have to say, I got a lot of really good songwriting material out of it, <laughs> for better or worse. <laughs> so I wrote this song um, <clears throat> when I was staying at a, a friend's house up in uh, the mountains of New Hampshire a couple autumns ago, and I was really missing my sweetie and feeling kind of romantic. And I wove in influences from some of my favorite poets. So there's a little bit of the um, West Virginia Appalachian poet Louise McNeil in here. I'll tell you more about her later. And uh, <clears throat> a little bit of Robert Frost, wonderful New England poet, and also a little bit of W.B. Yeats from Ireland. So the name of this song is Tell Me Love. Tell me love, tell me low and tell me true How the robin's egg came to be so blue Come the night, lift your head and tell me why Kindled stars hold vigil in the sky Why the meadow love 
weaves a ribbon in a nest. Come at night, take me to some riverbed. Let the willow weave a bower for our bed. Golden honeycombs. Deep and dark, ribbon maples where the bobcat leaves a mark. It's enough for me to know when I depart that I'd a home here in your heart. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to sing you a song in, uh, in Gaelic here in a second. But uh, before we do that, we've come to the portion of the show that I like to call the enforced signing of the mailing list. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my mailing list around. And I don't know, maybe Mark, you could help me with this. You could just maybe grab it down here and, and start sending it around. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Um, so anyway, if, uh, if you put down your name and your email address, uh, at the end of the show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose someone from the list to go home with a free CD. So it's a pretty good deal. All you have to do is your name and your email address, and I promise that I will not bombard you with spam. I, uh, <laughs> I only send out my newsletter like once every couple months, and I try to make them like really poetic, and I... I kind of tell like a short story either from my adventures touring or my life and people really, really love my newsletter. It kind of has like a cult following. So anyway, um, please do add your name and uh, just a little hint, um, the person I usually choose as the winner is whoever has the most legible handwriting. So, <laughs> oh, so just a little, a little hint for you. Um, <laughs> So uh, anyway, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sing you a song in Gaelic. Uh, the name of the song is She is Gunnan Awin, and that means down to the river. Um, and so the phrase that I've come up with to describe my music is Gaelic Americana, because I like to weave together Celtic and Appalachian music to kind of create something a little bit different and new. And uh, I kind of started getting into Celtic music and the Gaelic language, Scottish Gaelic language in particular, when I went to Nova Scotia after I graduated from college on a Fulbright Fellowship. And I was studying Celtic music up there, and I started hearing people speaking Gaelic. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's such a beautiful language. So then I ended up going over to the Isle of Skye, and uh, I spent a year at a place called Salmodostic, which is a four-year university where you can get a degree through the medium of Scottish Gaelic. And uh, I did a program that was really intense. It's for beginners, but um, it's complete immersion in the language. And they usually bring you to fluency by about the fourth month. And uh, I was there for a year. And so I was really excited to find this song in particular that I'm going to sing for you because it's actually a traditional American psalm that was translated into Gaelic by a woman named uh, Kenna McKenzie. She's a beautiful Glasgow-based Gaelic singer. And some of you might recognize the melody if you've seen the film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Have some of you seen that? Yeah? All right. So you probably remember the moment in the film where everyone's going down to the river to be baptized, and there's that beautiful Alison Krauss song playing in the background. So that's actually a traditional American psalm that was translated into Gaelic by Kenna. And first of all, I was excited to find it because it's American, translated to Gaelic. I thought, oh my goodness, how Gaelic Americana is that? Uh, <laughs> but the other really neat connection is that there are theories that American gospel music is actually connected with the Gaelic singing tradition. So there's something that still happens on the outer Hebridean islands of Scotland today. It's called Gaelic psalm singing. And you can hear it if you go to services there. And basically what it entails is there's a caller that will stand at the head of the church. And she or he will call or sing out a line to a congregation. And then the congregation will sing it back to them. 
And everyone will pick like different melodies and sometimes different rhythms, but they all end up together in the end. And it's a really like eerily beautiful thing to hear. And so the theory is that when the Scottish people immigrated to the Appalachian region during the times of the Highland Clearances, they brought with them the tradition of Gaelic psalm singing that mixed with the music of the African-American people and gave us what we have today with American gospel music. So <laughs> it's a little bit of a stretch, but when I listen to Gaelic psalm singing and then I listen to American gospel music, I can really hear a strong link between the two traditions. So there's the full history. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sing this for you. Um, if you would like to sing along, please feel free. You can sing in English or Gaelic or whatever your, <laughs> whatever your chosen language happens to be. <laughs> so this is She is Gunnan Owing or Down to the River. Nor I me she is Gunnan Owing and she. Gorni so fallum, falco ye is go. Laces grin and shade, fick ye stood me not ye. O fraud and rack a she is, rack a she is, hook a she is. O fraud and rack a she is, corny son now in lay. Nor kai me she is, gonna now in a chain. Gorni so fall them, fall yes, go yell. And Triskens grin and shade, fig ye, stood me not ye. Oh, fairy in rack a mid she is, rack a mid she is, a hook a mid she is. Oh, fairy in rack a mid she is, corny son now in lay. Nor I me she is gonna now in a chain. Gorney so fall them, fall go ye is go. Laces grin and shade, fig ye stood me not ye. Oh, what he can rack a mid she is, rack a mid she is, a hook a mid she is. Oh, what he can rack a mid she is, corny son now in lay. Nor kai me she is gonna now in a jay. Gorny so fall them, fall yes, go yev. And duskens grin and shade, fig ye, stood me not ye. Vardy can rack a mid she is, rack a mid she is, knock chick she is. Vardy can rack a mid she is, corny son now in the nor kai me she is gonna now in a jay. Gorny so fall them, fall ye is go. Laces grin and shade, fig ye 
stood me not here. Oh, Do you recognize that? Some of you, yeah? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's... Okay, so um, are you ready for the rock and roll portion of the show? <laughs> well, it only lasts for one song, so don't get too excited. <laughs> um, so uh, this next song is uh, inspired by a couple things. The first is the poetry again of uh, Louis McNeil, the wonderful West Virginia Appalachian poet who I mentioned earlier. So Louise McNeil was from the, um, the mountains of West Virginia and she was one of our early poet laureates and uh, her poetry was very lyrical and ballad-like and a lot of her poems would have just made beautiful songs. And she's been a wonderful source of inspiration for my own writing to kind of capture a little bit of that Appalachian voice as a New Englander. Um, so there's a little bit of influence of Louise McNeil in here. And also the character of Miss Havisham from Great, Expec Great Expectations. Um, so my father is a writer and one of the first books that he ever read aloud to me was uh, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens which I think is rather cruel and unusual punishment for a five-year-old. <laughs> but uh, I very clearly remember the scene where Miss Havisham goes up in flames, and that really just captured my five-year-old imagination. I just thought that that was the coolest thing ever, and that really kind of stuck with me over the years. And so I thought it would be interesting to write a song about someone similar to Miss Havisham, who was left at the altar by her sweetheart, and uh, she never quite gets over it, becomes very, very reclusive and bitter. And I thought it would be interesting to move her out of England and into the Appalachian region. And I think that if she lived in a place like West Virginia, her name probably wouldn't be Miss Havisham, but it would probably be something like Tilly Sage. So this is Tilly Sage. Sugar, 
dash of spice could sweeten Tilly's heart once more. So I'm going to uh, slow it down again and uh, sing you another song off of my newest album. So uh, this song has a, a couple sources of inspiration. Um, the first is just kind of the, the atmosphere of the Deep South. So I recorded uh, my latest album in Louisiana. And I was two songs short for a 12-track album, so I finished writing the lyrics to Tilly Sage on the plane ride down to Louisiana. And then we recorded Monday through Friday, and I wrote the chords of the song on Wednesday, the lyrics on Thursday, and we recorded it on Friday. <laughs> so <laughs> it was really down to the wire. But uh, I think because I was under so much pressure, this actually ended up being one of my favorite songs that I've, I've written in quite a while. So. Definitely a lot of the atmosphere of the South in this song. And uh, also inspiration from a beautiful John Hyatt song called Crossing Muddy Waters. And what I really love about that song is uh, it kind of turns a very common trope in folk music. I mean, I think this is common in all of music on, on its head. And uh, that's that concept of the man being the one to lead the relationship. So there's so many songs out there about men leaving and all the, what scoundrels they are. Not very many songs about women leaving, but Crossing Muddy Waters is different. I really like that. So I decided to write my own song about a woman behaving badly. Um, and I had her leave her lover in the middle of the night for the bright lights of Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> and I named her Evelina. So this is Evelina. Send the wind to calm 
my wayward love home by tooth and nail I'll set a caged heart free take my grave wide and deep Emelina I want me the guitar off for this next one because it requires a little extra oomph. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to sing you another song in Gaelic. It's called Porsche to Beal and it literally means tune from the mouth. And uh, the tradition of Porsche to Beal singing in Scotland is really interesting. So basically the theory is as to uh, how this tradition came about is during the time of the um, oppression of the Scottish people by the English which was the time of the Highland Clearances, which I mentioned earlier. It basically became taboo slash illegal to show any of your Scottish pride or nationalism. So that meant that you couldn't wear your kilt, you couldn't speak Gaelic, and you couldn't play the pipes. And of course, this was devastating for the Gaels because the pipes were so important to not only the music of their culture, but to dancing, which was something that was very near and dear to their hearts. And so they kind of got creative with this. And what they did was they started singing the songs that they used to play on the pipes. And um, that way they were able to keep that tradition alive. And it traveled all the way over to Cape Breton, Nova Scotia during the times of immigration. And you can actually still hear people singing Porsche de Beale in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia today. So it's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a go. <clears throat> and basically the way that someone shows that they are an expert Porsche de Beale singer is, that, is if at, by the end of the tune they're still standing, that means they're a master. <laughs> so let's hope that's the case for me. <laughs> so this is Porsche de Beale or tune from the mouth. Ha pita gek ma kom ish ha buk oled a vlogin Pita gek ma kom ish ka ma ka fonik skinda Pita gek ma kom ish ha buk oled a vlogin Pita gek ma kom ish ka ma ka fonik skinda Pita gek a klik a di gek ma ka va di yipiti Nam vege mar hi ka gek ma ka fonik skinda Pita gek a klik a di gek ma ka va di yipiti Nam vege mar hi Pita <laughs> 
Kõige ka maaga fooniks kinda Pita kära klekke tiigek maaga vaadi jipiti Nüüd veege ma rehe Kõige ka maaga fooniks kinda Toh, chicken mini toh, mini toh, chicken mini pita kere klihik toh, chicken mini toh, mini toh, chicken mini pita kere klihik. I'm a shorty children child, like speak who's a liar me. I'm the Callum Harness star, like fair na pita kriyavi. I'm a shorty children child, like speak who's a liar me. I'm the Callum Harness star, like fair na pita kriyavi. Toh, chicken mini toh, mini toh, chicken mini pita kere klihik toh, chicken mini toh, mini toh. A chicken man, a beat a get a clear he. I'm a shorty to the angelic speak who's a leer me. I'm the Callum Harness star, sick fair, and a beat a clear me. I'm a shorty to the angelic speak who's a leer me. I'm the Callum Harness star, sick fair, and a beat a clear me. Shall of Cody Yo and his choreograph, Ficador, a shell of Cody Yo and Shakatakaru Wabin, Shall of Cody Yo and his choreograph, Ficador, Shall of Cody Yo and Shakatakaru Wabin, Pio and Bio and Bio and the Skipper, Pio and Bio and Shakatakaru Wabin, Pio and Bio and Bio and the Skipper, Pio and Bio and Shakatakaru Wabin, Shall of Cody Yo and his choreograph, Ficador, Shall of Cody Yo and Shakatakaru Wabin. Shall of Cody Yo and his choreograph, Ficator, a shall of Cody Yo and Shakatakar you have been Pio and Bio and Bio and the Skipicor, Pio and Bio and his Shakatakar you have been Pio and Bio and Bio and the Skipicor, Pio and Bio and Shakatakar you have been Da Haber and Nari, how do these sons of Cari, Da Haber and Nari, how do you take a new lack, Da Haber and Nari, how do these sons of Cari, Da Haber and Nari, how do you take a new lack. Get the hummy gun with that, and how do you do sons of Cari? Get the hummy gun with that, and how do you take a new lack? Get the hummy gun with that, and how do you do sons of Cari? Get the hummy gun with that, and how do you take a new lack? Da haver and naughty, how do you do sons of Cari? Da haver and naughty, how do you take a new lack? Da haver and naughty, how do you do sons of Cari? Da haver and naughty, how do you take a new lack? Get the hummy gun with that, and how do you do sons of Cari? Get the hummy gun with that, and how do you take a new lack? Get the Hami kunru takam, haru tiya sansakari. Get the hami kunru takam, haru teke nu lak. Thank you. Thank you. Still standing. <laughs> Well, we're getting close to the end here, but uh, I've got two more for you. And uh, <clears throat> for the last song, I'm going to get you all singing along in Gaelic. So <laughs> I hope you're ready for that. <laughs> so uh, this song doesn't really have um, <clears throat> too much of a complicated backstory. I, uh, it's one of my early songs, and I wrote it about one of my favorite, other favorite times of year in New England, which is the autumn, which, as you all know, is an absolutely beautiful time of year. And uh, I just wrote this song when I was home one fall in New Hampshire, and I was looking around at all the beautiful colors and feeling kind of romantic and inspired, and I decided to write a love song for the season. So this is actually the second song that I ever wrote. I was 19 when I wrote it, so that was two years ago. <laughs> I always hope that somewhere there will be an audience that doesn't laugh at that joke, but <laughs> so far I haven't been so lucky. Well, two, one out of two of those statements is true. <laughs> I was 19, but I'm not 21, alas. <laughs> So this is called Winter Fever. Looks like it's your days once again I can't fight the autumn So I'll just sit here and reminisce As the light fades slow to evening Baby, you know as well as I do 
time of year for reuniting. But I'll just sit here and breathe the coals. Do you warm me up and bring the morning? It's those winter fever chills. Bring me down. So snow and sweet until you're in my arms again and you kick wandering from your feet. And baby, I know the cold can change its face, make you think you're losing ground. Love to me if you need a compass I'll guide you homewards safe and sound It's those winter fever chills Bring me down So snow and sweet Until you're in my arms again and you kick the wandering from your feet. chase the road as long as it takes for you to slow down and remember and find your way back quick to me till I'm lost in late December you know Keeping me warm till you get back. It's those winter fever chills. Bring me down so slow and sweet. Until you're in my arms again. And you kick the wandering from your feet. It's those winter fever chills Bring me down So snow and sweet Until you're in my arms again And you've kept the wandering from your feet <laughs> All right, well, I'm sorry to say we have come to the end of our time together. Um, but before we finish up, I am going to teach you the chorus of this song as promised. And I would like to just say a few things before that. Uh, so first of all, I would like to mention that I do have CDs for sale. I have my debut album, Mononga, which was recorded in Ireland, and it was produced by a man named Donna Hennessy, who was a founding member 
of a wonderful Irish group called Lunasa, and uh, that CD has a lot of really wonderful Irish musicians on it. My second album, North Star, was recorded in Scotland, and it was produced by a man named Seamus Egan, who was a member of a band called Solace, which was kind of like an Irish-American mix band. That CD has a lot of great Scottish musicians on it. And my latest album, The Art of Forgetting, was recorded down in Louisiana, and it was produced by a fellow named Dirk Powell, who is an expert in Cajun music. So there's some Cajun influences on there, a lot of really wonderful American musicians, including a woman named Rhiannon Giddens, who some of you may have heard of. She's a wonderful vocalist and American artist. So uh, if you would like to pick up a CD and take it home, I would be very happy to sign it. Um, <clears throat> one thing I will say is, Unfortunately, I can't do handshakes or hugs because I'm actually almost 22 weeks pregnant. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> this is actually my first performance in two years and my first performance pregnant. So like, even just talking, I get like more out of breath. It's, <laughs> it's weird. Anyway, so I just have to be super, super careful about COVID and everything. And I'm going to put my mask back on, but I would still like love to meet you. I can sign your CDs. Just I can't really do like, you know, the, the handshake hugging kind of thing. Um, so uh, yes, there's, oh, yeah. yeah oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm always stepping on it. <laughs> um, so yes, and uh, I also would like to mention that uh, if you like my music and what I do, the very, very best way to support independent musicians, especially during troubled times like these, is something called Patreon. And what it is, is if you subscribe to become one of my patrons, I will send you new music every month. It can be as little as $5 or as high as $100. I, have, I don't have a $100 patron yet, but I'm holding out for that day. <laughs> so if you go to my website, kyleannecarry.com, so that's K-Y-L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, and with an E, C-A-R-E-Y.com, you will find out how to go to my patron, and you could uh, decide to subscribe, and I would love for you to be a patron. So. I would also like to say thank you very, very much to the Thomas Crane Library for having me today, to Christy, to Carrie, to Mark, and to John, who helped me kind of get everything put together today. So I think we should give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Um, and I also think it's time to choose the winner of the free CD. So could someone bring up the mailing list? And I will, I will choose that person with the perfect handwriting. <laughs> Oh, oh, we've still got someone signing up there. I'm trying to think, how to, do I have anything else to say? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Does anyone have questions, anything? Yeah. How much are the CDs? Great question. So if you want to get one of my full-length CDs, it's $20. But if you want to get more than one, I knock it down to 15 each. I have two little EPs that are $5 each. One is of English May Carols, and the other one is a, a winter EP that I recorded a year ago. So I sell it all year round, because you can always listen to holiday music. <laughs> All right, you guys have been amazing. Got a lot of names. This is going to be hard. <laughs> um, well, I tell you, it's not easy, but Ella Sharp, you really st like jumped out with your perfect handwriting. So are you here, Ella Sharp? Is that you? Come on up and get your free CD. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, as promised, I'm going to finish up with another song in Gaelic. I'm going to teach you the chorus. Um, so this is a walking song. It comes from the tradition of walking the tweed. Excuse me one second while I catch my breath. Oh, man. Ladies, do you remember how much your body changes? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. So uh, it's my first and probably my last. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't want to go through this again. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, the, the tradition of uh, walking the tweed was something that was very unique to women in Highland Scotland. So basically what that process involved is that women would take the freshly woven tweed and they would sit around a table and they would bang it against the surface of the table and they would sing as they did that to keep in rhythm with each other. And this process that was called walking would soften and tighten the fibers of the tweed. 
And uh, it was definitely very much like off limits to men. And one of the things that's really interesting about walking songs is it allows you to kind of have insight into what women's lives were like in the highlands of Scotland back in the day. Um, so that's one reason why I really like walking songs. And we're gonna break the rules today. I want the men to sing along with this as well. So don't be shy, guys, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and teach you the chorus. It's very simple, it just goes. <clears throat> Did you get that? <laughs> All right, don't worry. I, I'm going to break it down, so don't worry. <laughs> so the first half of the chorus is That was amazing. Well done. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I know it's been two years, but I don't remember an audience ever being this enthusiastic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the second half is Excellent. All right. So the whole thing is Very good. That was beautiful, you guys. So the good news is that you are going to hear this chorus repeat about 20 times throughout the song, so you're going to have lots of opportunities to jump in. <laughs> so if you miss it the first time, don't worry. Many more chances coming up. And um, I guess that's it for me for today. So thank you all so much for coming out. And this has been a pleasure, and I, I hope to meet you after the show. So this is called Girlish Girlie. It means she is my love. <clears throat> Girlish a girly, a ho who wo who wo, her de o who wo do he o he o, me to dock me down, a ho who wo who wo, her de o who wo do he o he o, now my ballock mo down, a ho who wo who wo, her de o who wo do he o he o, lash and lass get a gown, a ho who wo who wo. Girl it out and it nil, a ho who wo who wo, her de o who wo do he o he o, me to lock me down, a ho who wo who wo, her de o who wo do he o he o, me go beer who lock bean, a ho who wo who wo, her de o who wo do he o he o, me ma who a gun call, a ho who wo who And actually, um, I'm directly descended from the uh, Adams and Quincy Adams families. So my father is Richard Adams Carey, and my brother is Ryan Adams Carey, and we've got another Adams coming up, so. <laughs> but we're, we're descendants on Abigail's side, so, yeah. I, I know, I was, that's why I've been so excited to come here. It's like, oh, my, my ancestors are from here, so. But yes, absolutely, yeah, my heritage is that, so. <laughs> Any other questions or? All right, well, I'll just be over here. <laughs>